So let's look at some books you should have today. And this one is called Figure, the Drawing the Figure by Walt Reed, who's done a series of books of how to be an artist, what to do to draw better. And here you can see how he breaks down figures. Now, a lot of these books show you ways to simplify the figure into basic shapes and then they become a bit more complex as you continue to draw over them. Here's a page full of action poses that are made up of cylinders. Here's more stuff, how to break down characters, putting characters into action poses, more action, using photographs for reference. Just a lot of great stuff in this book. There is something missing from most of these books, and I'll get to that a little bit later on. Here's a part about faces, drawing heads in general, great artists and how they draw heads, how to draw hands. A lot of good stuff here. This is the figure. Uh, this next book, I don't have a paper cover for it, and it has been reissued, so you can still get it. And this is one of the great Andrew Loomis's books called Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. And I remember, I think I had this book out of the library when I was in junior high school or so. And again, it's um, this is how to approach figure drawing. There's a lot of text in here. But then we get to the basics of drawing the figure, what figure drawing is all about, perspective of it, proportions, how to get proportions and perspective right, how to simplify the figure into stick figures so that you can have something to hang it on. You start with stick figures and then you just hang volumes of shapes solids onto them. Action poses. Let's go into the middle, see what he's got. Figure in action, twisting, turning. Twisting, turning. Makes your figures look a lot more interesting when you do that. More text, spring-like stuff. So a really great book. He did also these, these books for Walter Foster, who also put out those anim the animation book that I use as reference all the time. This one is How to Draw Heads. I have Heads 2 here. I don't think I ever had Heads 1. But what this is, is excerpts from his hardback books. So, a lot of good information here. Breaking down the head into basic shapes, guidelines. Another one he did, this one, Figures in Action. Again, this is excerpts from his other books. Again, by Walter Foster Publishing. Start with the head go into the body, quick sketches, ink sketches of the body. Uh, and here's one of the one of the big books. I don't have the paper cover for it anymore, but it's Dynamic Drawing, Dynamic Anatomy by Bern Hogarth, who was one of the great figure drawing teachers, but a great comic strip artist from way back. There was, back in the old days, a comic strip of Tarzan by Edgar Rice Burroughs, and one of the great artists that drew it was Hal Foster, who left so that he could have his own comic strip called Prince Valiant, and I think he said to the syndicate, 
that distributed the comic, you'll have a hard time finding someone to take over the strip. And I think like uh, that day or the next day, they found this guy, Bern Hogarth, and he took over, turned the strip into something totally different than what Foster was doing. Here you see him drawing a lot of basic shapes, getting into the anatomy of all the muscles. How to pose the arm, what the arm and back muscles are made of. There's just so much in here. Leg muscles, foot muscles, bodies. So yeah, another great book. Now this book, I don't have the paper cover for this one either, but this is the Bridgman book. Bridgman was one of the great teachers of drawing the human body. He was one of Norman Rockwell's teachers. Um, Will Eisner had him as a teacher at one point in his education. And his book is breaking down the figure into basic shapes, which is what I tell you to do in my tutorials. Light and shade on the body. How everything is related. This is sold both as this big book plus a bunch of small paperbacks so that you could get just the part that you want. I think there's one that's um, constructing the head, constructing the body, constructing hands. But you see there's very small figure drawings here that are just done as very quick sketches, basic shapes like this. Two rectangular solids with something in between representing the spine as to how you can pose. Here's how we do the arm, elbows, hands, very important. I showed you a bunch of hands in another tutorial. All the muscles in the hands and how they work, how to put them together so that they make sense. So that's another great book to get. This book was recommended by John Buscema, one of the great comic book artists of all time. And I read an interview with him where he said that this was the best book he ever had about drawing and anatomy. And again, it goes through breaking down everything into basic shapes, how to draw them, start with the head as always, move into the body. And it's not a very huge book. It covers everything that the other books cover, but in this guy's way. So, again, it's a reference book. You don't have to go through it and copy it page for page, but you look through it and you get, you get an idea as to what it is you need to, to reference for your drawing that you're doing. So, you can find any good anatomy book, drawing book about anatomy, that is. Not a, not a medical book of anatomy, but a drawing book of anatomy that'll help you in your drawings for animation. The missing part of these books is that there will be these breakdown drawings that show here and here and a skeleton and then covering it and then any page you go to inside there's something about, uh, let me see if I can find that, those pages. Pages like this, or uh, here, where it's breaking down these basic shapes and the parts and all that. These things here. And the missing part for me is that if you are drawing a figure and you're trying to get it down there really fast, like this, 
and you may do all kinds of stuff because you're just trying to hurry up and get through this. That's that way. This is this way. So we slant that way and then put our leg down like this. Maybe over here. And then this one goes like here. The way these guys do their books, it never shows you that to get from this to the next point is that you start with this and then you put your other stuff on top of it. Now you can start putting these cylinders here and here. And musculature but you start with your scribble if that's the way you want to go and then you start putting the basic shapes on top of it like this I'm doing a very cartoony version here it's not totally anatomical. It's a superhero. He's got boots on and, of course, gloves of some kind because they don't want to leave fingerprints, right? But this is, this is the part that people don't always explain to you is that you start with your scribble and then you go back and put your, your basic shapes and anatomy on top of the scribble. You might have just dots for eyes and a simplified nose and do something like this and his ear back here and maybe you want his arm to go up like this maybe he's pointing towards camera but I just scribbled that out there and then I need to go back and put the foreshortening in like this. So this is why you take life drawing classes so you can get get those muscles right, get the placement right. And then you can go over it on another sheet of paper. And if you're doing a cartoon version of this, uh, let's say it's a funny animal character, you're going to do something like this. And he's got pear-shaped body. Maybe it's Bugs Bunny. exaggerate everything
but this is based on what I just drew. And if I didn't know too much about human anatomy, I couldn't do a drawing like this very convincingly. And maybe he's talking to some tough guy down there. And... But this is a very quick rough that that you have to go through in order to get to the finished drawing, right? And then you would go over it very roughly and start straightening out some of some of the anatomy stuff there. Maybe his body's too fat. You have to slim it down a little bit. Maybe his leg has to be shortened a little bit just to make it feel right. You just make all of your corrections as you go along. If the neck seems a little bit too long, bring his arm up like that. And it'll come down like this. So that's how you can use anatomy to do your characters. There's something that's semi-realistic. This guy is about six heads tall. And here's Bugs Bunny using that same pose. So anyway, I will go into this more later, and as always, keep drawing and keep having fun.